this video, I'm going to be talking about how I made the camshafts for my Kawasaki Z1 Super 6, some of the problems I had and how I overcame them. To make the camshafts for my Kawasaki Z1 Super 6, I need two sets of Kawasaki Z900 camshafts. I have to extend the camshaft to give it an extra lobe at each end and then reorientate the other lobes to match the timing of my crankshaft. I'll be using old gudgeon pins to maintain the concentricity of the camshaft when I bore out the centres. The first thing I do is go out to my shed where my grinders are and cut the camshafts into lots of bits. I basically have to cut off all the lobes so that they can be machined, realigned and welded. I use my one millimetre wide cutting discs. They make light work of cutting through steel, especially hardened steel. I glance up and I'm not even frightening the birds with the noise from my grinder. Well, that's the first lobe cut off. I've only got another seven to go. And here they are. All the bits are cut and roughly lined up on the grass. So now I've got to bore out all the centres and put them back together in the right order. After cleaning all the parts to remove all the grinding grit, I assemble them in the cylinder head in the order they're going to be. I've now got to set each piece up in my lathe Drill a hole in the centre and bore it to accept the gudgeon pins with a nice tight fit in one half and a sliding fit in the other. So I set up my four jaw chuck and put a piece in it and true it true. I'm using an independent four jaw chuck where each jaw can be adjusted independently. This allows you to adjust the position of the component relative to the centre line and get it running true. Well that's pretty good, I'm happy with that. With the portion of camshaft running true, I put a carbide cutter in the tool post and face off the end. The camshaft's case hardened. It's very hard on the outer skin, but softer in the centre. With the end surface faced off smooth, I set up a centre drill and drill the centre. I then drill a hole into the piece with a drill to a depth of about half the length of a gudgeon pin and slightly smaller so that I can bore it out accurately to a finished size. I use my automatic feed to ensure I get a nice smooth finish when I'm boring the hole. Well that's the first hole bored to size and the gudgeon pin is just fits, a really tight fit, absolutely perfect. So I take it to my vise to squeeze it together and it is really tight which is exactly what I want because I want one side to be really tight and the other side to slide so I can adjust the position of the lobe before welding. And here's the first lobe finished with its location dowel and old gudgeon pin. If you look closely at the end, you can see where the cutting tool has made the outer hard skin shiny and the inner softer core dull grey. With another piece set up in the forge or chuck, I have to remove some raised bosses. These are really hard and the swarf glows red hot. I then set up the centre portion of the camshaft and bore the hole in each end so it's a sliding fit with a gudgeon pin. I run the lathe to check the concentricity and it's perfect. I'm well pleased with that. I do a trial assembly of one camshaft with its two additional parts on the end. They fit nicely and slide around with a nice tight fit, but not too tight you can't move them. Just right. With the inner four lobes complete and adjustable, it's now time to add the outer two lobes to make a six cylinder camshaft. And after several hours of machining, here we have the two camshafts, all machined and fitted together, with all the lobes independently adjustable to any firing order I like. I removed the two outer cam lobes to make the camshaft shorter for the welding process initially. 
Grip it in my forward jaw chuck, set up my dial gauge and my degree disc so I can orientate the lobes at 120 degrees to each other. I find the highest position on the cam lobe, then set the degree disc to zero top dead centre. I then traverse the saddle so that the DTI lines up with one of the inner lobes. Then set that lobe to the highest setting. When I check the degree disc, I found it was exactly 120 degrees and I'd set it by eye. I then rotate the camshaft until the degree disc reads bottom. Then the saddle is traversed until the DTI is touching the outer cam lobe at the end and I use pliers to rotate the cam lobe to get the highest reading. The two inner lobes are now opposite, the two outer lobes are now opposite and the displacement between the inner lobes and the outer lobes is 120 degrees, so that's just perfect. I weld the camshaft together in the lathe, so I first check that it's concentric with my DTI, then power up my TIG welder. Then I set my lathe in its slowest running gear and adjust the phase inverter so that I'm at 1.5 Hz. This gives me one and a half revs per minute on the spindle, just right for welding. With both the welds completed, I set up my DTI and check for run out on the central location and I'm really pleased, it's barely moving, less than a thousandth of an inch. Hello? Is that Pete? DK Motorcycles? Great. Now, I need some camshafts for my Z900 engine I'm making. I got the wrong ones. I think they're Z1000. They're slightly different. Have you got any Z900s? You have? Great. Can you send them down straight away as fast as you can? Because I need them tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Bye. Fast will go. Oh, great. Well done. That's good. Thank you. I was just about to weld on the N2 cam lobes for each camshaft when I noticed they looked slightly different. So I mic'd them up and the lobes were one millimetre thinner on the width and about a millimetre higher on the height, which was no good. So I had to send for some more camshafts and then start again just for the outer edges. So anyway, I should have checked them at the beginning, but I didn't. But I got there in the end. With the new parts made with the correct size lobes, I assemble the camshaft to check for run out and it's pretty good. But this time, I think I'm gonna heat it up in my barbecue before I do the welding, because they're much longer. 15 minutes later, they're about 200 degrees, which is just perfect. I had to wear my thick leather gloves because they were too hot to pick up. I put a camshaft in the lathe and switch on my TIG welder and proceed to weld. The chuck set at 1.5 RPM makes it much easier. Then, when I check my DTI, I've got nearly 20 thousandths of an inch run out. I was sort of expecting this really, because they're very long, but this is easily rectified. Get your TIG torch out, turn the crank camshaft to the high position, and then warm it up with the TIG torch, and as the metal shrinks, pulls it dead true. Well, it takes a bit of practice, but you get there in the end. After finishing the welds at both ends and truing up all the distortion, I check with my DTI and it's now running much nicer, within a thousandth of an inch, that'll do nicely. It is 24 inches long, so as a percentage, it's a very small amount. I take the camshafts out in the garden and give them a sprinkle with my hose to cool them down, because they were just a bit too hot to handle nicely. Then, my next job is to fit the sprockets. The camshaft sprockets are marked individually inlet and exhaust, and must be returned to the correct camshaft. This will help with the timing because my inner two lobes are actually in a standard position so all my cam timing marks line up when I set the two middle cylinders to bottom dead center. And here's the marking for the inlet camshaft sprocket. 
Finally, I grip the camshaft in my vise using aluminium soft jaws and tighten the bolts really tight because you don't want these coming loose. And here's the finished camshafts. They just drop straight onto the cylinder head and rotate nicely. I'll be fitting all the caps next and checking all the clearances and making sure it's all good. And then I've got to build the head, put all the valves in, do all the shims, do all the timing, and then I can start building the engine.